let's go. All right, welcome to Gravy Boat Cooking and Camping. Today we're here with Glenn again. Um, so if you haven't seen the episode about Glenn's caravan, make sure you uh, click up on the link up here and check it out first and then come back and check this one out. Um, but Glenn's here today to show us his 200 series Land Cruiser. That's it. So uh, we'll start at the front, go from there. All right, mate, do you want to start by telling us the make and model? Yep, it's a 2018 VX 200 series Land Cruiser, twin turbo diesel. Um, we bought this brand new, so everything you see, we've, that's how we've ended up the way it is now. Um, I'll just start from the front. So we've got the ARB, I got it um, color coded, so to match the color of the car. I went for the, I think it's the Warren Magnum, 12 thousand pound winch um, went with the ARB recovery point down the bottom with the Brown Davis underbody protection yeah right eh? all through there see it in under there nice and solid yep it protects yes. a diff and everything as well under there doesn't it yep right up to the train uh, the end of the gearbox okay yep um Originally, I had the X ray vision spotlights. Yeah. Um, after I fitted the light bar on the roof, I found the spotlights here <laughs> weren't bright enough. They were keeping up. Were keeping up. <laughs> but also, um, on the 200 series, you've, you've actually got a vent in there for your transmission core. Okay. And you've actually got a vent in there for your inner core. And the spotlights actually sat right in front. Um, we've never had an issue with the airflow and, and stuff like that But yeah, if they're blocking off a, a, a vent, I think that should be unblocked So that's why I've taken them off and went with the uh, 32 inch light bar And then I've got the 40, 42 inch light bar up the roof, so that's what we've done Yep, do you get much, um, talk about the light bars yep. at the moment Do you get much reflection off the bonnet from not the off, one up the top? Not off the bonnet but mate, when you hit a sign on the side yeah. of the road, that blinds you more than the <laughs> than what's coming off. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. they're really bright. So yeah, yeah, unreal. And so you're happy with the steadies? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, they're a, they're not a, they're in the middle yeah. of a cheap mid, one, mid and range, a, yeah. but um, perfect. They're actually brilliant for what you pay for. So perfect. Right on. I went for the Uni Den um, CB. I did have a JME in the other cars, and I thought I'm going to try something different this yep. time. So I went for the Uniden. CB's a CB to me. You yeah. Talk and receive. Yeah, I've had both. I don't think there's a lot of difference. Nah, nah no difference. <laughs> um, apart from that, does your number plate flip up with the winch, or yep. is that? Yeah, really up, up like your, that. It's got steel cable on your winch. There. Yeah. There's so much debate between steel and. Yeah. Um, the rope type and I debated I was which one I get honestly I know the steel ones not as safe as the, the rope but on saying that with the rope every time you get them dirty you got to wash them and all that yeah well they degrade don't they? um and the only time we've used the winch so far is to pull trees out of the backyard <laughs> <laughs> so, haven't oh. even used them for recovery yet so that's all right it's there when you need it Exactly. So the only difference I've done, because ARB in Bundy done all this, I've actually wired up a switch inside okay. the car to turn the winch on and off. Okay. So yes. that's the only thing I've done different. Uh -huh. um, under the bonnet, there's not much different under the bonnet. Dual battery. Is that uh, just an AGM or? Yeah, just an AGM at the moment. Yes. Um, I've, I'm running the secondary fuel filter. Um, on this side, I'm just running a, um, it's a solenoid. That's to turn my fridge on and off in the caravan when I pull up somewhere. Oh, okay. So that automatically dis disconnects my fridge. It's like, like a rattle, sort of a movement? Ah, uh, no, no. Just like, just operates off 12 volts, so okay. yeah. Done that. And the only mod I've done to the engine, which you probably can just see, is I've got a, um, Provent, Provent. Oh yeah, catch can. Catch can. Yep. And I actually wanted it. It's underneath there. Right. That was from Mark Davis. Oh, Mark. Mark adapters. 
Yep. I wanted it hidden, I didn't want it up the top there. Yep. So put it underneath there, perfect. So you, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't have even know. No. I've got a catch can. No. And the actual drain tube. Yep. Comes in there. It's oh, there. Yeah. yeah. It's the drain tube there. Neatly tucked away out of, out of the way. Yep. Yep. You can easy, easily put a container under that and catch yep, anything you've got. And yep. Yeah. So, so that's got, about... Um, diff breathers up the back there. I've got diff breathers. They're just the ARB ones. Yep. Um, apart from that, I've done nothing to the engine. So it's all stock, stock standard. standard. Yep. Enough power, hey? Yep. Yep. I've got. That's good. And so this is the... These are the vents you were talking about yep. before. And they come up okay. through... Right through here. Through there. Yep. And you've got your... Um, Oh, the red arc, yeah, DC to DC charger tucked in behind there. That's the 40 amp one, yeah. So that'd, that'd get a lot of air through, keep it pretty cool, cool. as well. Yep, now they put them, mount them in the front, not yep. in the back. Yep. And actually, that's um, for the sole too. So it's so the Anderson on the battery here is that run through the red arc, or is that just a... that one? That one runs through the red arc as well. Yep, I've got a, a, a separate 120 amp or 120 what solar panel okay if i've parked under the shade i can actually plug that one in straight in there but at the moment i've got a 200 watt solar panel on the roof okay. which is permanently wide yep um so you would rarely use that hardly oh. use it yep yeah. so with the, with the wiring a lot of people ran wiring through the back and all that i've actually taken the covers off here okay and all my wiring's actually run run runs underneath right okay. and it runs for me spotlights it runs on the other side so when you look you can't even see where me it's neat yeah where the wiring is very neat so that's what i've done for the um wheels yep. i had them powder coated okay um would i do it again no <laughs> yep okay um they just chip and the, the clear coat just seems to crack so th they there look perfect they look good but they they just the powder coating just yeah i'm not happy with it so all right but at the moment they they're doing their job so they, they do look good yep and uh looks like there's a bit hidden behind there yeah i've done the just the brake and brake pad upgrade so it's okay. the dba yep. slot of discs and the four-wheel drive brake pads or the towing ones or big difference uh yeah yeah yep. made made a huge difference so done that um, when we off, is it the stage two um, GVM upgrade? So I had it all done before registration. Yep. So I've done up to three thousand eight hundred. Okay. That GCM as well, or just GVM? Yeah, and GCM. And GCM. I got that just before the new that uh, law came in. Yep. So I'm both now, so I'm good. Perfect. Um, I had the fulcrum, upper control arms, the adjustable ones. Okay. Fitted. Some light in there. Oh, there we go. Pick it up there now. Oh, they look good. Yep. So they help out with all your angles and angles. So that's all pretty good now. That's so good. done that. I had this um, the snorkel fitted. The Air Max one. Um, working along. Yep. Um, when we first bought the car, we had the manual. The car comes out with power fold mirrors. Yep. But Clearview only done the, the standard ones, just the manual ones. And about six months after we bought the car, they bought out a powerfold Clearview mirrors. Um, we were too late and we weren't going to go and rebuy them again. And about 12 months after that, I was on their website for some reason. And um, I noticed they do a, uh, what do you call it, like a, a rework of the manual ones yep they convert them to power fold ones okay. so i took them off sent them down got them um now they are power fold ones all right um i don't bag products but they only lasted 12 months and they <laughs> stopped working so i had to send them down for repairs which i had to get a new motor in them yep see how we go but yeah oh as long as they're fixing it fixing it under the... warranty they fixed under warranty so that's, see how we go all right, no. yep. Um, on saying that, we had the, the standard um, steps were good. Yep. Um, but the only thing is, you have to s stand on them to get into the car, and it was painful. Yep. So we actually went and got the um, 
power fold steps. Oh wow. Tuck up well yeah, out of the way, don't brilliant. I? Yeah, brilliant. Yep. Real good, so. And you've just been on a bit of a trip, no issues with um, damage or anything under them? Or? No damage, yep. but, but um, we just came back from up north for over four weeks and we're on um, dirt road. Because the standard steps come out, yep. they protect all underneath. Because these now fold in, the stone damage all along the seal. Uh, yeah, right. I yeah. can't have both. So I've got stone damage there, but oh well. That's, there you go. Can't have everything. But... Yeah. So All that's right. that. I just got the Rhino roof rack. Yep. All we've got up there is the shovel, Max Tracks, um, a 200 watt um, solar panel. There you go. And we just got um, a wind deflector from Stealth, which no longer. A mate anymore. He closed his business oh, did he? at the end of the end of last year, wasn't it? Yeah. He, he used to be a Queensland base. A guy just making him out of his backyard. He was an engineer, a, a engineer, and COVID got to him, and so we yeah. can't buy them anymore. So only on eBay. But and it make, makes a difference. Fuel wise, I can't tell. Yeah. But um, stability when you're driving with the van, you can feel it doesn't. The van doesn't get thrown around as much, so okay. yeah, it does make a. But I wouldn't go and say it saves Lots three of liters per hundred. Holds it, yeah, holds it just, just seems to hold the van a lot steadier on the road. There's so. a lot to be said for the wind and how yeah. the wind works with your vans. Like yeah. you, you, you notice it so much passing trucks or trucks yeah. passing you on double lane highways and yeah. things like that. You can just, it's amazing. So yeah, I'd. Yep. that would help out a heap. Um, trucks coming towards me, I've got no problems at all. Yeah. But when we're overtaking trucks, especially the triples up north, as soon as you yeah. get to a certain point, it just feels like your, your van's getting, getting sucked, sucked in. in. Yeah, hundred so, percent. Feel the same. Yeah. Mind, so. yeah. Um, inside, I've done nothing different. As I said, probably the only thing I've changed is I've changed the switch. So okay. now I'll run all switch more switches there. Oh right, yeah. So you've got. You've got obviously the, is it the DPF and the RSCA? Yeah, that's your yep, traction control. Yeah, they're all, they're all standard. Yep. And then the only one that's not standard is me. I've got a uh, stock lock for me transmission. Okay. Yep. Um, it's called the stock lock extreme. Yep. Um, it's their new one. It's their new one, so it automatically comes in at seventy-eight k's. Oh, right, okay. And then locks up the torque converter. Yep. If I then go to sports mode and shift me lever across, yep. it then locks up at 38 k's in any gear. Okay. If I then go to four wheel drive low, it locks up at, in second gear at uh, 13 k's. Right, yeah. So for sand driving and all that. Yep. So Downhills too. Yep. And so, like. but yeah, that I noticed the difference on fuel. Um, not a huge difference, but a litre here, two litres there, all adds up. So definitely. So they're um, fairly luxurious inside the VX. It's yep. Big so, screens and um, the only thing I got because we've got the leather interior. I've yep. gone for the. I try to get Australian made, so I got the Neoprene Dingo Trail. Okay. Seats front and back. And your um, cover there as well. Yep. Center console cover. Very clean and tidy. I should have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the trip <laughs> later. We might even do a separate video on that. Um, for the back, I've mounted me axes. Okay. Yep. I've mounted the axis there. And block splitter and an axe and yep. the back of the drawers. Yep. Your fire extinguisher. Ah, oh, you stole my hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. A little issue with that, but we fix that yep right. yeah i had a bad squeak after our trip couldn't work out where it was coming from okay and it's driving me absolutely crazy and then i found out the bolt was actually about five mil too long that holds the strap and it was rubbing on the drawers oh, on the back right, right. found it there you go <laughs> um with the back of the car yep before i show you our biggest issue was 
with weight. Yeah. Even though our car can go to 3.8, but maximum on our car we can go is 3.5 with the van. Okay. So if we put the van on the back, we can't go no more than 3.5. Yeah. So we had to cut weight down. So when we, we decided one weekend to have a go, so I got rid of the high lift jack. Um, I've never used it. I think it was just just there. They're one of the most dangerous recovery gear equipment to use. So yeah. that weighed at 15 and a half kilos. The drag chain, never ever used. I've used the drag chain pulling out stumps here than I've actually used for recovery. Yep. That came in at 10 kilos. Um, and then we f I have a 40 liter Ingle fridge. That came in at 26 kilos. And then I had a, um, I forget the name, a ridge, oh, I forget the name, I've got to look for it. Um, it was a tilt slide. Okay. That yeah. weighed 26 kilos. So I've gone, right, we've got to get rid of weight. And plus, with the tilt, it was working. It was just awkward and land was having troubles moving it. So we decided to get rid of all that. So I've ended up going for the the medic fridge, okay. bar fridge. This is a 57 litre fridge. Yep. Um, it's a fridge freezer. As long as it can hold me milk, that's all I worried about. Yep. Um, so this can now work as a fridge freezer. I can take that out and use it as a fridge. Okay. Or I can use it as a freezer. The whole thing is whole a freezer. Thing is a freezer. Okay. 50 litre, it was 50 litre fridge, seven litre freezer. Yep. Um, the un I wanted this height because I didn't want to get rid of the top rack. The top rack. Yep. The Bushman, Bushman was the only other one that would do it. Okay. But they had a smaller freezer um, so what I've done that, I've done, originally this was a ARV fridge slide. Yep. And that was what my ingle was on. But when I pulled it out, I couldn't see. So then I had to put it on a tilt slide. And then, even then it was kind of awkward. So we've done that. So now I can actually just slide this out. Oh, right. So I made all this to go around it. Yep. Um, I've only got a little 10 litre water one. Yeah. Um, when we went away, it was painful because I had to pull this out and because okay. we only use it for making coffees and all that yep. so as usual when you get home you modify everything so now I've got a tap there <laughs> and now I've got there you go so much easier you'll always do things when you get home so <laughs> so I've done that so that just runs out of that 10 litre tank 10 litre tank we only use it for and then I can pull that out and fill it up when I have to. Yeah, just eat it. You know, cups of tea, things like that. Yep, just perfect. Easy. Um, when I when I had my tilt slide, um, I couldn't see, so I ended up getting um, their rock slider lights. Yep. And those Terra Loom Industries. Yep. Yeah. Happy so, with them? Oh, at night time it just brightens this whole area up. Don't need a lot of light, do nah. you, with those LEDs? Nah, perfect. Oh, yeah. So we've done that. Switch there. Um, as I said before, oh, I've got my ARB compressor, which is the twin. Okay. Down there, um, turn it on. When I had my airbags, I had airbags fitted to the back. And I've seen a lot of places where they put the inlet or the, the valves. Some people were putting them underneath there and I didn't like that. I didn't like it underneath anywhere. Yep. Um, TJM in Bundaberg did it and they were spewing. <laughs> And I was spewing on me. They actually put them right there, so that's where my valves are for my airbags. Perfect. Um, my tire inflator just pumps there, turns around, and just so I can pump up my airbags. I know it's not flash like the remote ones, but no, oh well, can't have everything. Let's be honest. Yeah. How many times do you pump up your I airbags? Don't. I you, pump them you, up when I'm travelling. Exactly and, right. Yeah. And that's it. So I see the um, I see like the in cab kits, but. You use it to pump up at and the let start. You, you level it all out, you pump it up, and then yep. you leave it for yep. as long as you're going for. So, yep. so we've done that, and then um, as as we're not telling you in the caravan one, I've got my 
Oh yes. Yep. That's my little battery pack one, so I can jump start cars. But I also also use this for um, me water pump when I'm filling up my tanks in the caravan. Yep. So that's the one that you use. That's the one I use. Yep. But then that's the 200 series had a hundred hundred watt inverter okay. in the back, so I've just got that always wide so while I'm driving it's always charging so perfect that's, that's what you need so. it? Yep. yeah and your angle fridge monitor just for the one yeah here. just for the yep. for the fridge there so but absolutely the fridge was the, one of the best things happy with it on the trip well, oh. you, you were telling me you just got to put in just before you left so. I just I, I mounted all this myself I yep. did it all different yeah um, as I said I made the all the cabinetry behind it yep. um, but I've actually it's all mounted from underneath so oh, I had right. to have a gap yep yeah because they got sweet. the legs the little legs I've taken the the legs off put a um, one of them the nut inserts yep and then bolted a bracket to it and then it's all bolted from underneath okay so yeah good one we were on the road for what f just over four weeks and I not once had to hook up to 240 just most people when they go caravan parks all of a sudden bring out all their leads hook up yeah. I think it was bringing down it was maybe one amp okay yeah hardly perfect. anything so no, that's brilliant yeah so no, no I think that was one of our best best ones so so you, your drawers just a standard ARB ARB drawers draw kit um, um, you carry in there most of the time just this one's all our cooking and stuff like that yep this one here is, um, I think it's Ranger and Patrol Recovery. <laughs> <laughs> put Ranger in there. Just, just, I'm just saying because pick, pick two cars that I used to have. That's fine. I'm that. just saying because of Leanne's Josh drives around. <laughs> so yeah, we just got this. Yep. That's just all me in a recovery gear. Nice. Um, I'm gonna put that table there. Good one. Apart from that. Oh, that's where the solar panel is, 120 watt yep, just solar panel. There. And what sort of stuff, when you're traveling, what sort yep. of stuff do you put in, in the back here? Nothing. Nothing? We try not to. We, when we went away, we, we took the two chairs. Yep. Um, but we found we didn't use them. But that's how it is, as I say, in a 200 series. Once you start doing all that, you've got no, yeah. no room. And if you've got your van on, everything's in there. That's right, exactly. So, yeah, well... Yep. As I said, everything's pretty. We're happy with everything. Um, Tire-wise, this is the first time I've ever run the Toyo tires. Yep. I've always had BFGs, mud tires. Give something else a go, and I've found no problems at all. As I said, you just tire pressures. Yep. Let your tires down and drive to the conditions. And that's right. You hear of people tires blowing out and, and why? Yeah. So no. Apart from that. Right. Any um any exhaust upgrades? No exhaust. It's all standard. All standard, stock standard. So, yeah. um, oh, the only other thing we got was the Sunseeker. Yep. They're handy. They're handy. The only reason we got that is when we first started. I used to carry two twenty liter water up there. Okay. And I couldn't get up there, so we end up buying the extendable ladders, which is in the van. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't put it anywhere because it was actually rubbing on the car. Okay. So I had to buy something to put there so I could <laughs> lean it against it. So I actually haven't used it. So. Oh really? Yeah. So it's still. I think oh. I've used it here twice. I need to pull out to see if it still. Still works. Still works, but as I said, everyone goes for the. the is it the two seventy and? Yeah, the I've got to worry ones. about weight and. The problem with the wraparound ones is especially with well, well I have trouble with my patrol was when the doors come up it yeah. comes up higher than the okay. than the, beam, the bars yeah. so there's certain models that skip all that and yep. yeah yeah you sort of got to spend the money to get that so yeah apart from that I think that's about as I said so the rack's just a backbone system backbone yeah we wanted the backbone I wanted the flat ones just so it sits flat um ah very neat and tidy. Oh, hi. Hi, thanks for showing us around your, no your car. Um, let's talk about some your mods. A lot of modifications on there. 
I suppose you've probably talked about a few of them here and there, the ones that you sort of did like and didn't yep. like and things you had troubles with. But what would be, if you had to pick a favourite, put you on the spot here, Yep. what would be your favourite modification that you've done to the car? Before? At the moment, my best one would have to be the fridge. Okay. I like the fridge. That's just so much easier. And yep. people talk about it. Does things fall out when you open up the door? No. Nah, yep. Nothing's falling out. But then again, I haven't been going up hills. Yeah. Like that, so yeah. But apart from that, Leanne likes the clear view. She loves the the steps on the yep. on side the bottom, steps. the side steps. She loves them. I just think overall, yeah, it's been everything. Not yeah, yeah. I couldn't say one thing, but yeah, yeah overall everything. So been pretty happy. Yep. Okay. And what about something that you probably wouldn't do again? The, the thing I wouldn't do again, and as I was saying before. On a 200 series, yep. rock tamers. We haven't talked about that. We didn't really yep. talk about that in the video, but feel free to. Yeah, I, talk about I had it now. The rock tamers on the back, and um, they just. You've got to set the way they set up, they're actually set up upside down. And because there's a, such a, a, a gap between your rear bar and the, the rock tamers itself, there's probably about, I don't know. 30, oh, about 20, 20 mil gap. Yep. And when you hit um, the, the pebbly roads and all that, they just came up in between and they just smashed the back of the car. They didn't smash me back window, yep. but they smashed, just chipped the rear um, yep. the rear bumper bar. So that's probably the thing. Yeah. And as you know, I've taken them off and yeah. So, and that's on a 200 series. Yeah. You were saying Other that. Other cars could be different. but Be different in a ute because they're sort of sitting up down under the chassis, yeah. sort of against the chassis under the tray or something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, on mine, I just wouldn't, wouldn't go. If anyone wants to buy rock tamers or stone stompers, I'm going through the. I'm going to try the stone stompers next. Okay. A little bit more expensive, but then again, it's cost me a thousand bucks to get the car, Paint <laughs> car, car so, painted. So. Yeah, so Glenn was talking about he's got to paint the back back of his car because of all the stone chips and you know one or two stone chips there it's, it's there's a whole lot of yep. chipping there isn't there yeah so. but pro apart from that there's nothing else you can complain about oh yeah the powder coating i wouldn't do that again yep. but yeah the um for, for a car that's got a lot of mods on the outside the cockpit side of it yep is very neat yeah you've done a really good job just kept it stock yeah I, so, I like that. I like the look of just being yeah, stock. Yeah, yeah. So the switches are all stock. They look yep. stock. You've got your... The only thing probably sitting there is the UHF. That's, the UHF, yeah. Yep. And I could have had that tucked underneath. Originally, that was when I got the car back. That was only in the console. Yeah. How painful is it? It is. I haven't got... I haven't actually drilled a, a spot on mine yet. Yep. Um, but I'm going to have to. Yeah, because and it's, I did it's sitting in there. Yeah, it's just in the way. Just painful. Um, the only... Oh, sorry, the only thing I done different was um, the brake controller was actually yep. on my right hand side so where them switches were yep I found every time I was getting in and out and then when I was driving my knee was actually hitting the switch okay so every time I was hitting the brakes the van was locking up and yep. what's going on so I actually swapped that to the left hand side so yeah no, actually I've um yeah heard of that happening yep. some others too yep so that's probably the only other thing but apart yeah. from that all good Perfect. And um, no no issues with towing, obviously, overheating or anything like that on the nothing, trip? Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Good as. Sucked yep. a little bit of fuel, but you know, it's because of a headwind. But yep. but overall, as I said, and now, after our trip, there's a lot more rams. Yeah. A lot more rams and the big cars coming out now. So yep. still a lot of 200 series, but... Yeah. And Y62s. Yeah. You see a lot more of them on the road as well. Yep. I can, um, can vouch for their fuel economy. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we used to have on them before the Ranger, but um, yeah, brilliant car. The yep. worst thing we did was sell it, but yeah, I'd, I'd have it back tomorrow. But um, yeah, just when we were towing. Yeah. yeah pretty thirsty. Yep. All right. Well, once again, thanks very much no for, for just inviting us in and showing us around the car. And yep. I'm sure if anyone's got any questions, they can ask them in the comments. Yep, You're pretty it. frequently on there. So, um, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. And uh, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and ask any questions to Glenn you have. But until next time, cheers. See ya.